here today, huge supply chain issues. Um, tell me, in your opinion, what are you doing to address the supply chain issues? Uh, talk about why they're going to be effective and in what time frame are they going to be effective? Well, thank you. Uh, supply chain concerns are obviously one of the top things that are uh, on our mind and that we're working on. And let me begin with what's been effective in the work that we've done since uh, the president's executive order last February and the convenings that we held over the summer of, of last year. Uh, there are at least three dimensions of this on the uh, freight mode side that are going to make a big difference, uh, shipping, rail, and trucking. And we've assigned a number of actions uh, against each category. Uh, one thing, for example, that made a big difference was uh, working with the ports on measures that contributed to the 50% uh, drop in long-dwell containers at the ports of L.A. and Long Beach uh, by taking steps to hold shippers accountable for those containers kind of sitting there and, and uh, uh, causing delays in the system. A big part of it also has been uh, public-private conversations. Uh, data sharing, we found, has been a, a big issue among those different modes. And so I want to applaud in particular uh, the players, I think, who currently number about 18, ranging from the ports themselves to uh, companies like True Value and Albertsons to shippers like FedEx and UPS, uh, participating in our flow program, which is gathering data that most Americans might assume is already shared between different steps in the supply chain, but actually isn't, leading to inefficiencies, which in turn increases shipping delays, shipping costs, and ultimately contributes to inflation. Uh, so these are some of the steps that we know are making a difference in the shorter term. For the longer term, we think the best thing we can do is to enhance the public infrastructure that private companies operate on as they move goods and freight across this country. And, of course, that's why we're working so hard in the context of this budget request and throughout all of our activities to deliver on what's possible under the bipartisan infrastructure law. When are we going to see some of these supply chain uh, problems ameliorate. I mean, talk in terms of specifics and time frames in the near term, not the long term, because people are feeling sure. that pain right now. Well, again, one thing we've already experienced is the reduction in long dwell containers. Uh, another thing that we've seen is that if you look at the goods availability level in retail, they're more or less at pre-pandemic levels at this point. But we are still seeing a lot of pressure on, uh, on the ability of supply and supply chains to keep up. I want to emphasize that's not because our ports, for example, are moving fewer goods. On the contrary, the goods movement, for example, through L.A. Long Beach, quarter one this year, was an all-time record high. So it's not that they're moving less. They're moving more. The trick is the demand is even greater than that, and the supply can't keep up. Uh, I would break this into two categories. There's supply chains as such, goods movement, in other words. And then there's just plain supply. Uh, when you look at some of the... Uh, news about uh, shutdowns in China, for example, uh, that creates a whole other set of issues because you can't ship something that hasn't been produced. And that's one of the reasons why the president and the administration are placing such emphasis on building and making more things in America so that a supplier or a customer never gets the answer when they're wondering why something isn't ready, that it's sitting on a boat waiting to come over from China. You mentioned, though, containers. Our farmers are having a terrible time getting access to containers because in many cases they're going back empty yes. rather than with product, which is why I joined with uh, Senator Thune, Klobuchar, and others, and we passed the uh, Ocean Shipping Container Act through the Senate. We hope the House will concur with it, uh, but giving the Federal Maritime Commission more authority, but we've got to get access to these containers and not have them going back empty. What can we do about that? This is a great point, and our view is that that Ocean Shipping Reform Act could make a, a real difference here. Uh, in the meantime, we're taking steps like working through that data exchange I mentioned to try to uh, make sure it's more clearly communicated when the last chance is to get a container loaded or filled so it doesn't go back empty, uh, and measures like the uh, temporary container yards. We partnered with Georgia uh, to make that possible for Savannah, uh, I think Oakland is undertaking the same practice, uh, noting, as, as, as you said, that this is important not just in terms of being able to get consumer goods shipped in, but being able to get our agricultural exports shipped out. What are you doing specifically to make sure that the trucking is coordinated with the ports and the containers, the rail and the shipping, so that we keep increasing this throughput? You saw GDP growth last quarter was negative, and that's due to a number of things, but one of which, including inflation, but all that also is part of these uh, supply chain issues. Great so point. And those often, three, how are you bringing those three together? Because yeah, that, so, that's very important. 
Right. So I mentioned the, the, the ports action plan and, and the data sharing piece. I uh, appreciate you raising the trucking issue, which is a very big one. Uh, part of this is a, a labor issue. So the availability of truck drivers. My department estimates 300,000 people leave that career every year, and we just can't afford that, not when the ATA says that we're short 80,000 So people. expediting getting people into those trucking jobs would really help. But back to the questions that Senator Braun was asking, we've mm -hmm. got to cut. We can't have more regulation red tape. We've got to cut through this. Agreed, and, and hopefully that means you'll be pleased to hear about our uh, work with state DMVs to reduce the red tape associated with CDLs, not compromising on the standards of safety, of course, but just making sure the process is less burdensome so we can get people safely into those driver's seats. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Secretary, uh, thank you for coming today to discuss uh, the fiscal year 2023 budget request. The hearing record will remain open until Friday, May 6th, to allow members to submit additional questions for the record. This hearing is now adjourned. Thank you, Chair.